All right, so welcome to the IBC community call. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a, a round of uh, updates as regular as usual. And then uh, today we have uh, Rhys uh, from Strangelove, who's going to demo local interchain. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, we can go through the uh, the updates like in 25 minutes or approximately, and then we have enough time for the demo and discussion afterwards. Um, Susanna, would you like to start um, with product, uh, uh, product updates? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I guess the so the first thing is we have the AI chatbot and a feedback widget live on our doc site. Uh, so yeah, if you I don't know, Carlos, maybe if you just like click on the link just so I can show what I, I'm talking about. I'm not sure if uh, if it will let me see. No, yeah, it, because I think. Uh, Work on Safari or something like that. Is it? I uh, tried. It, it works Is for me on Chrome. You want to, but, um, or let me try in Chrome uh, then. Oh, well, I mean, hope it works for Chome. As you can see, that on the right corner there, there's a little like feedback yeah. thing. So you can click on that one, and that one works at least. But the AI bot's not not yeah. there. Yeah. But for Chrome users, there's a nice little there. Uh, um AI chatbot who can answer questions you might have about uh IBC. So yeah, feel free to check that out, try it out. Hopefully it's helpful. Um then the other thing to note is uh we kind of archived the IBC Gang Discord server and moved everything over to the interchain server. There's just better moderation and better to have things not as fragmented across multiple servers. Um so yeah, just a little update on that. And there's just one blog from the IBCRS team that was published last month on the website um, all about IBCRS. So feel free to check that out. Cool, thanks. Um, any questions for Susanna? If not, uh, I can give updates uh, for IBC Go and Specs. Um, yeah, so in the last uh, weeks, uh, since the last community call, we made a lot of progress in the two main uh, yeah, uh, features that we were working on, uh, the rocket integration and the POC uh, for OP stack integration. Uh, for Rollkit, yeah, I think we have most of the IBC code changes uh, complete. Uh, so we, we, we have conditional clients. Uh, we have uh, Celestia DA Lite client. Uh, also be a, a PR open. Um, yeah, so IBC Go site is, is almost done. Uh, now we need to spend time working on the on the custom wasn't contract for the roll kit like client. Uh, yeah, so we'll be focusing that in the next uh, weeks. Um, yeah, and in the meantime, we've also been coordinating with the uh, uh, roll kit uh, team um, and also Hermes uh, to add support um, uh, for uh, Rocket uh, clients. Um, yeah, we will continue with uh, uh, that work uh, in the next uh, iterations. Uh, and then uh, for the um, for OP stack integration, yeah, we we made a, a lot of progress. Uh, we we successfully completed a, a POC. Um, that yeah is basically what is described here. So we managed to have um, an OP rollup. Uh, that runs uh, the EVM, but also a Cosmos SDK state machine. Um, yeah, and we will manage to uh, send transactions uh, to both, uh, and the IBC transactions were sent to the uh, to the Cosmos SDK state machine. So, so yeah, channel handshake or sending a packet, all those transactions were sent to the SDK state machine. And yeah, those transactions were being executed, and then. Uh, the, the the blocks from each of the uh, state machines, so from the Cosmos SDK state machine, from the EVM, they uh, they were uh, included in a single block that was returned to the OP node. Uh, yeah, so this was the scope of the POC, just to 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 test uh, to try if this uh, idea that we had of of an um, what what we call a sidecar uh, chain would work. The sidecar chain is the Cosmos SDK state machine. That basically does the IBC connectivity. Uh, yeah, so we wanted to test this idea, and 
yeah, it's promising, and yeah, we managed to to test what we wanted. There's still a lot of uh, work uh, ahead uh, to bring this into production, and now we're gonna uh, elab evaluate the results of the POC and and have some discussions with. Uh, uh, OP Labs, um, uh, base, uh, yeah, to to assess the interest on this kind of solution before we continue spending uh, more time and resources on it. Um, but yeah, it was very very successful POC, and we were very happy with with the result. Uh, and a lot of the work that we did was actually yeah uh, based on on polymers uh, work. So yeah, without uh, their support and and the work that they had already done, yeah, we wouldn't have been able to to make so so much progress in in just four or five weeks. So yeah, shout out to to them. And yeah, and, and there's a link here with the with the repositories that uh, basically uh, we used uh, we worked on during the POCs. If anybody wants to, yeah, check those out. Um, yeah, so those are those were like the two main features that we were working on and. And a bit on the side, uh, we were also trying to move forward with uh, the O2 client routing refactoring. Uh, yeah, the main idea is, yeah, uh, of this refactoring is that we want to decouple uh, the encoding structure uh, from the routing. Um, so, yeah, uh, currently uh, for each uh, light client, we have the encoding structures for yeah, client state, consensus state. Uh, and the encoding structure of the client state is used in the O2 client layer um, yeah, as the routing mechanism. So depending on the type of the client state, uh, basically the the um, the requests are sent to the to, to the right uh, light client implementation. Um, yeah, and the idea is to decouple that uh, to make the encoding structure uh, um, yeah, just as dummy as possible, so a plain uh, encoding structure without no interface functions or anything. Um, and yeah, we have a PR open for that, uh, and we yeah we plan to yeah the idea is to to complete this uh, this quarter, and we have some follow up issues to work on afterwards, um, and yes, yeah, some improvements that we could also implement in the future that this refactoring would enable, but that would be for later on. Um, yeah, so that's been so far. And, and then in the next iteration, so uh, we're gonna st start spending more time, uh, yeah, first on the, yeah, uh, on the raw kit work that we still need to complete, like the uh, custom Wilson contract. But then uh, for V8.2, uh, we also want to, re Release uh, adding support for queries uh, over ICA, uh, and for V9, uh, we want to work on uh, adding dependency injection support in IBC Go, uh, so that we can, yeah, so that uh, we can use uh, app uh, V2 and also the uh, the the chains that use IBC Go and SDK that can also use uh, app V2, make it easier for uh, for that. Uh, to implement also ICS twenty v two, this is um, adding support for multi token IBC transfers, and also working on the upgrade to the next next uh, Cosmos SDK version, uh, which will include Comet BFT one. Um, yeah, so this will be uh, where we would we will be spending uh, a lot of um, our time in the next iterations. Um, probably most of the Q2, actually. All right, yeah, so I think that's a bit uh, more or less. Uh, any questions about this? All right, if nothing for now, then we can go to the updates from informal and uh, IBCRS. Uh, Adit, would you like to... Yeah, update. I'll uh, quickly cover IBCRS. There's just two major things that happened late February, early March, and then I'll hand it over to Luca for Hermes. So the two things on IBCRS are uh, on the on the sovereign side, um, 
primarily, uh, or all of them are concerned with sovereign because that, that's that's kind of what inspired the changes. So first of all, on the uh, the wasn't client work that is supposed to verify sovereign uh, rollups that um, were able to create and update clients via CLI. So it has relayer support as well. And then the second thing, the second major update was ADR10, uh, both in IBCRS and changes in uh, stuff IBC. Uh, ADR10 is just, uh, it was associated with the Walton client and it made it easier for us to uh, to get, uh, to use just uh, ICS02 from IBCRS. So it kind of decoupled a, a bunch of things and it made it easier to uh, to use uh, just the Walton client with ICS02. Uh, so that was it from IBCRS. Cool, thanks, Sadi. Yeah. If there are no questions, then Luca would like to give an update. Yep. Uh, so on the Hermes side, we released 1.8.1, 1. uh, which had kind of three major points. Uh, we improved a bit the reliability of relaying. Uh, we added also some new configurations and uh, also improved the, the monitoring. Uh, by new, with new metrics and like kind of diagnostics and guide entry. Uh, we are currently working on a 1.8.2. Uh, it should be released by the end of today or tomorrow. Uh, it's a smaller version, a uh, smaller release than the previous one. It's a, it's more focused on the fixing some bugs and improving the, the connection and channel handshake uh, retread mechanism. Cool, thanks. Um, um, Luca, just a question. Uh, do you guys have now a timeline for um, a release that supports channel upgradability? So uh, we merge everything in one PR now, and uh, this is we're going to aim 1.9 for the channel upgradability. So uh, we now have only one PR that needs to kind of be confirmed that it has all the tests and works as uh, required, and then we'll, we will be able to review and merge it. Okay, cool. Cool. And then the the so so the release would be like in the next, I don't know, some I don't know, four or five weeks or something like that, or that uh, kind of Yeah. Uh I don't have like a precise uh, timeline. I would expect in the yeah, four or five weeks should be we should have it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Great. Uh, thank you. Um if there are no other questions, we can Go through the app this from Strange Love. Uh, Justin. Yeah, Justin is here. Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in one of these. I think the most recent release is v2.5.2. Um, so this patch release fixes a couple of bugs, one being that uh, we weren't properly importing a tag version of the common BFT RPC client wrapper that we're using now to handle the uh, changes to the block results um, API. Um, that's been fixed along with upgrading the various dependencies on CompFT and the SDK. Um, there was also an issue that was not being caught in any of our testing, but was uh, presenting itself in production where um, sometimes it would detect that a message update client needed to be sent to a chain, um, but an error could happen due to uh, one of the RPC calls that were made when, when building the message. Um, and then it would attempt to send a null message, which was causing uh, panics. So that's also been fixed. Um, we also noticed that there is an issue with querying all of the channels. When the relayer starts up, it attempts to query all of the channels for the configured uh, connection. For chains like Osmosis and the Cosmos Hub, where there's many channels um, and it needs to make many paginated calls to, to query all of those, we were seeing that it was timing out before it could actually uh, finish the query. So we've improved that. Um, and then we did just land support for uh, the Osmosis Dynamic Gas Price uh, feature, their EIP-1559. Um, and then beyond that, right now I'm currently working on the uh, cryptographic equivocation, the uh, misbehavior detection for interchain security. Um, I've got a working branch with that in it that just needs to be tested thoroughly. And then we are begun scoping um, channel upgradability, but realistically probably a couple months out before that lands in a in a release okay cool thanks thanks yep. justin uh, yeah, yeah as far as interchain tests I actually Brees, you're on the call maybe you could speak to that one a little bit more i think you've spent a little bit more time on interchain tests lately yeah for sure so we recently had a big state breaking change upgrade in 
0.1.0 of Interchain Test. This brings a lot more features to the this set, including per querying old proposals with the Gov v1 as well as the latest Gov or Gov v1 beta one and Gov v1. So we've simplified all of that logic, abstracted it away for users, and we've added a lot of the chore of, of the core Cosmos SDK commands by default. So sending tokens, et cetera, was already built in, but now we allow you to query very deep level things, including using IBC, including Token Factory and other core modules like Cosmosm, Crisis, Distribution, et cetera. So it's a lot easier for application developers to continue to build on interchain test. And then on the, the IBC side, bringing in Ethereum support to allow for teams such as Ethos and others to test their IBC compatibility layers. That has now been brought in as well. And we have Ethereum support in interchain test. Cool. That's uh, great. Yeah, nice. Thanks. Uh, I, I, just, just a question for you, Justin. Uh, for the Rocket work that we're doing in IBC work, in IBC Go, um, uh, we had to, yeah, we wanted to, to test uh, um, like the connection between a Rocket rollup and a Cosmos SDK chain and using uh, a awesome Tendermint contract as the uh, as the light client for for the for Rollkit for the rollup, uh, so we wanted to test that scenario that, that uh, setup, um, and and we ended up using the GoLang relayer, uh, but we had to bring it up to to date uh, with the all the all the changes that we did in OIT was some uh, last year. Uh, we we used a branch that Steve had. But yeah, it was quite out of date, so so we had to, yeah, to to basically update it. Uh, yeah, and and we got that all that uh, working. Uh, so the Go Relayer was uh, yeah we, we were able to use it to to create the client on the Watson on the Watson contract etc. Uh, and we were just uh, discussing uh, if uh, yeah if you guys would be interested if, if we upstream uh, that to 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 the relayer uh, yeah absolutely that would that would be great um if there's any prs that uh, anybody on the team wants to open up if you want to just uh, ping me I, i'd be happy to give those review cool then yeah we can open a pr then yeah yeah charlie Perfect. did most of that work so she can probably open the pr great and and um, also yeah go ahead justin yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, while we're kind of discussing this, I was going to ask Reese, uh, is there any updates on the uh, adding support for Celestia inside of uh, inside of Interchain Test? That is currently being worked on. We're talking with the Rollkit Celestia team. And so there's a draft PR up. It needs some touch-ups, and then that will be in Interchain Test. Cool. Great. Okay. That, was, awesome. that, was going, yeah, that was going to be my second <laughs> question. Uh, yeah, so, so Kian were, was also having a look at that PR and, and he left a comment in, in the PR that you opened, uh, Ruiz. Um, yeah, so, so if you need any help from us or any support, uh, yeah, also let us know. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. All right. Uh, so now the update from Penumbra. Uh, hey. Yeah. Uh, I'll be quick because I really want to watch the local intern chain uh, demo. But uh, on our end, we've uh, we've done a lot of work on actually sort of operationalizing uh, our impul. So that means um, um, working with uh, our Hermes fork and preparing like strategies to upstream it. Um, so we got that working, and we have uh, we have. Uh, Connections and channels opened with uh, Noble and with Osmosis and, and Noble. And now, what's next for us is uh, we're going to do a big assurance push uh, and collaborate with uh, with Astria on that to just sort of like make it uh, make things more more prod ready. Um, so that's the general theme at uh, at Penumbra, and uh, that's pretty much. It's, but yeah, oh yeah, and generally speaking, we're also trying to flesh out a strategy to um, upstream more work and share more work and see like, you know, what are our strengths and like, is there like synergies between what we are good at and what the ecosystem needs? So um, 
generally speaking, like happy to talk with uh, with people about about that stuff. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for us. Cool, great, thank you. All right, uh, then before we move to the demo, any other any questions from the updates or any other topics that we should discuss now? We have maybe like five minutes. Uh, not really, but I just want to tell people that I, I was at, I was at a financial crypto like conference, pretty academic, like this like last week, and uh, people really, it was easy to shill IBC. Uh, people like it, so I just wanted to surface. Uh, that. Cool, great, great to hear. Nice to hear. Thank you. All right, then uh, we can move to the demo. So uh, I will stop sharing and uh, Reese, you can share if you want. Great. And I will post these slides in the chat if you have issues viewing so that way that you can see it on your own machine. So I'm Reese. I'm at Strangelove. We built up local interchain. This is built on top of the interchain test repository. You can find it as a subdirectory. And we're targeting a different market with local interchain than what we are with interchain test. And I want to go over that. There'll be a couple demos in here showing the power that local interchain brings and the problems that we're trying to solve. Quickly, I'm going to go through who am I. I'm 22. I started in Cosmos at Craft Economy. I led the Cosmos SDK to Minecraft integration so that way that we could have chains talk over IBC to other Minecraft related chains. It was extremely uh, breaking. And then we had Microsoft come in and shut us down. All of the code is still open source. We're super excited about it, but we just weren't able to launch the product. We did get to launch that on Juno. So I joined Juno in 2022 through 2023 and began working on developer experience tooling to make building contracts easier. And then since then I've joined Strangelove and also now Roll Chains to begin further expanding that out into the interchain in relations to UX. Whenever I started, there were a lot of tools that I wish I had, and I made note of those tools of confusing areas. And so I was able to go through my list, see what the biggest problems I had onboarding, as well as others that I helped onboard into Cosmos, and then solve those for them by, by building up those solutions, abstracting away the complexities and bringing that to market. So a couple of things that I built are local interchain, which we'll be discussing today. Cosmos Cache, which is an RPC REST cache that does about a 90% cache hit rate, drastically reducing infrastructure costs and needs. I built a generalized interchain indexer, Cosmwasm web hosting, proof of the authority module, and also Spawn, which is a UX improvement uh, that's building up using local interchain under the hood. The problem is that local development environments are extremely hard. They're very platform specific, such as local osmosis, local Terra, where it's built for its own platform with very limited expandability to say, launch another chain uh, beside it, such as your own or one like Juno or others. You have to have lots of binaries installed where if you wanna have multiple instances of Cosmos Hub, you've gotta install multiple of those, rename them, chmod, and like all of this setup is required. And it's a lot of headache for someone that just wants to launch a chain and test it with IBC. There's a lot of bash. It's uh, a lot more bash than what most people are comfortable with. It's typically only local where you can't actually share that to others to use your test net because of security concerns with someone taking over with token faucet or other aspects there. And then there's a lot of OS dependencies where you're not really able to use Windows for a lot of these tools. Uh, it's mainly made for Mac. Some of them require Kubernetes, which is just another headache you have to go figure out if you're not typically a DevOps person. You're normally limited to one validator. Setting up the relayer is a hassle to go find, okay, where's that port? Go put that in your config, start it up. Oh, I'm out of funds and go restart the process. It's extremely difficult and it's absolutely terrible UX for new application developers, both on IVC as well as the typical chain side. So what do we really need? We need to be able to use any chain in Cosmos and ideally other ecosystems like Ethereum, Polkadot, et cetera. We should support all major operating systems it needs to be very easy to configure. You should have zero blockchain experience and be able to start up a blockchain. Maybe you don't understand all of the complexities that's going on behind the scenes, but at least you have a chain where you can begin to understand how things are put together and connected. We abstract away all of the initial IBC relayer setup. That way that a user can come on, I just wanna connect two chains. 
great, we're going to do that for you and allow you to just get started. And then you can build on more complex protocols such as ICA. You should be able to interact in a standard language and format. If you're coming from the standard Web2 world, you'll know Python or Java or Go. You should be able to interact in one of those languages. And we need to allow power users the ability to be able to bypass the abstractions and do exactly what they need for, for their given use case. Local Interchain is that solution. We have support for all Cosmos chains via Docker, as well as Ethereum. We'll have Penumbra support and Polkadot in the future as well. And whenever you're getting started, we have pre-built configs for you, which we'll go over in one of the videos. There's a REST API for interaction. This is completely optional. So by default, we have Rust, Python, Bash, and Go drivers, so that way you can use your native language of choice to interact with this, with this testnet of multi multiple chains. We'll have JavaScript, TypeScript, and, and Java in the future. Uh, but you can also still use the standard binaries if you want that way. So if you are a power user, you interact with the standard RPC, everything will work as expected. You just don't get all of the abstraction that we built in for beginners. On the requirement side, all you need is Docker and a standard operating system. We have Windows, Linux, and both Mac support. And you do need to know some JSON, but uh, by us giving you those configurations, we also have a CLI helper. It can automatically generate the JSON for you. We'll have web apps in the future as well to make this a very uh, non-difficult process. So I'm gonna show now the demo. This is going to build up a chain and show you kind of the, the format that we have here, as well as some example interaction and what that looks like. Here, we've got the main local interchain repository. This is gonna go through how to install it how to install it on like Windows 7, Windows 10, the different options that we have, maybe some gotchas and links to our, our other documentation, including the REST API and, and other repositories. This is a base network that is gonna connect Cosmos to Terra locally, and it's gonna connect them via these IBC paths that are human readable. So you just set Atom to Terra, and it's gonna automatically create all of the relaying behind you. We set up the Genesis accounts for you. All of that is loaded in, via the Docker images, it doesn't require any binaries locally other than local interchain. As long as you have that one binary, everything is handled for you. What we're gonna do here is start a base IBC chain. This will load everything into interchain test and begin to set this up as you normally would with any other testing framework, you just don't need to know Go. We can see these starting up in Docker PS and as the Genesis is, are created for you and the user can just let this sit because it's the first time it's not cached, it does take a little bit longer. Here's a more complex example of a base IBC using Juno, specifying things like the coin types, number of validators. You can override host ports so that way it's not randomized, Over, override config files, set a Genesis modifications, as we also mentioned, accounts too, and then startup commands where once the chain is started, perform Linux-based shell commands on the testnet to set it up, whether that be setting up contracts or some other functions that you need, you can set those all up there before the chain is exposed to you. The chain has now been set up and we can see that here where the relayer is automatically started for us between these channels, the Gaia hub or yeah, Cosmos hub node and Terra are open and it looks like a standard chain which is all handled by interchain test with the abstraction layer of local interchain on top. Here's an example bash script of how you would interact. This is ugly, but I just wanted to show if you want to use standard curl, you absolutely can with just standard post request. We also have an abstraction layer using local interchain interact that will handle these. So we have custom actions such as get channels to perform these as well as standard queries and relayer executions as well as executing via the binary, which we'll see in the next video. So all of this is done through Docker, no binaries except local interchain and you don't even really need that. And then here's some of the, the action values that you can provide in. The reason that we have auth key is that it allows for you to take a test net, make it public. Only your team can execute against it using this off key password and others can play on the test net with the standard RPCs as they would with any other RPC, RPC network such as uh, other test nets. So it allows for local test nets as well as public test nets. And this was shown out with Ethos's public test net where we use this to set up all of that infrastructure, set up Ethereum and then connect that all via the relayer and we didn't have to handle any of it it was all just done through a JSON config. So that's the base of what starting up a chain looks like and some basic interactions. The, here's 
some more configuration showing that while on the right, yes, it's a there's a lot of complexities that you can get into, but it's the same complexities that you'll have on setting up any other chain. So on the left, we have an Ethereum chain that follows the same format as it does on the Cosmos chain side. And we figure that out on our end for what should match and how to set that up. And you're also able to like load state for an AVS eigenlayer state can load up on the Ethereum side with the same format as you would have on a standard Juno side with its configuration. So a lot of it is passes right over and we already have those defaults built out for you. So it's super simple to modify it as you need. What about consumer chains? Consumer chains are notoriously a pain to set up with governance proposals and handling all of that. We abstract all of it away. You add a single line to your to your consumer and you specify, I want to link to Cosmos Hub with my local instance, in this case would be the provider, and it will handle all of that for you. So as it sets up, it will set up the relayers, it will automatically do your governance proposal, it will perform all of the Genesis needs, modify your Genesis to your, to your liking, and then set it up and you have full access to the ICS consumer that's connected to the provider. It has support for multiple consumers, so you can mock out an entire AEZ setup uh, locally with with using all mainnet related binaries and versions. What does client interaction look like? So we, we've seen that we can do post requests, but we can pull those into these drivers and allow for Python and Rust native code execution as a, to, as a programmer would typically be used to. So we've got a contract here, which is going to be a Cosmosm type, and then we instantiate on the contract. And it's almost the exact same uh, syntax for both of these. And under the hood, they're doing the same thing. We're going to instantiate the contract and run that code. Let's see that now using Python. So we're going to connect two IBC contracts over a double Juno network. So this is just two instances of Juno. And these have been automatically connected with uh, the, the connections. And then we're going to launch this CW IBC example. So this is, we started the chains. We're going to initialize both contracts, then we're going to relay connect those, and then we're going to execute on one, and over IBC, it will in interact on the other. So we've run this Python file. It's going to set up our base environment that we want outputs of JSON, and then we're going to upload these contracts to the Docker instance. So this is also going to automatically realize that they're custom WASM files. It will upload it to the chain and then return back to you the code ID. So you don't have to deal with any of that. You just need to store it on the Docker instance, and it takes care of the rest. We then instantiate both of these contracts. This is going to show here. We query those, those transactions. We parse it out for you. All of it's done through just standard curl requests to the local interchain, and it allows us this easy API to interact with in Python. We've interacted here. We can check that the relayer is now actually connecting these, these contracts that, that we generated. So the relayer has now done that. Currently, we only have support for the Go relayer. We execute on the, the channels, so that would be channel one, since we previously had channel zero for, for transfers. We execute on that to increment it, and then we flush those packets. Once the packets are flushed on the opposite side, we should see that increase to one, which we did. It was previously zero. So we have full IBC interaction with multiple smart contracts on multiple chains, and all we had to do was set up JSON and then interact with it in Python, no binaries required. It looks the same for Rust. With Rust, you use your, rate of, your native Rust syntax, and then we also have support for GitHub CI. So it's not much difficult. It's not very difficult compared to setting up interchain tests. You just run it in the background, and then you run make your run tests, and it will run all of your code, set that up, and continue on as if you're writing it in just a native language of interchain test. For our roadmap, we currently have Comet Mock support. It's a work in progress. GitHub CI is not liking it, but that will drastically speed up uh, the flows due to, to faster blocks. We'll have safe state in the near future as well, which will include mounting. That way, if your testnet goes down, you can just launch right back up as if nothing had happened. We want to have mainnet interaction too, so that way that your testnet locally can interact with a public uh, node or network, and that way that you can perform other actions based off of real mainnet state. So also importing Genesis states will be one of those added features as well, kind of part of safe state. Node upgrades are not really our focus since that's mainly for interchain test Go developers, but due to more chains coming up with Rust, we would like to add that support as well so you can write it in Rust. We'll have native ICA mesh security and polytone support. You'll add a single line that says, give me these features. I want to have an ICA 
channel automatically set up for me, and the Relayer will handle that for you. Same for Mesh Security and Polytone, where it'll upload those, those pre-built contracts to your chain for you. That way you don't have to do it yourself. As I mentioned earlier, TypeScript, JavaScript, and Java clients will come in the future. We want to support all major languages that have HTTP support. It's very simple to add. If you just look at the current Python and Rust examples, it will really show you where you need to go for that. And then the big part of how does this play into full, full building out of, of a seamless platform is using Spawn. Spawn is like Ignite CLI, but we allow you to choose and pick which modules you want. And then from there, in three commands, you can go from a brand new chain to an entire IBC test net that is connected to a local Cosmos Hub instance. So you would just say, spawn, create me a new chain with proof of authority. It does that. You move into that directory and then say, make test net. And it's going to build up all of Interchain tests for you and all of local Interchain for you. So there's a lot of great UX improvements that this, that this brings. And we needed this to be able to build onto that next level of abstraction for chain developers to just get started. So that concludes my talk on local interchain. Questions or you know, suggestions, you can either email me, send me that, or open up an issue in the GitHub. We're always happy to have people that think that there are better ways to do something. We're more than happy to get those in. Thank you. Is it all right if I um, jumped in a question now? Yeah. So it, as long as you can provide a Docker image, um, say you've got a, uh, a, a like a, a chain in development, you're in testnet or just before testnet. As long as you can provide a Docker image, you'd be able to use this um, yes. use this piece of software that you guys have made. Exactly, and you can use Highliner for this, which will automatically handle that for you. This builds up. I just put it in the chat. This will build up automatically, like public test nets, such as Gaia, Osmosis, Juno, etc. With Spawn, we automatically package that with you. So all you have to run is make testnet. We build up the binaries and Docker images for you without you having to touch any Docker or any Docker configs. So that's that's one group. Uh, and then also you could just import Highliner into your current repo, make local image, done, and then now you're able to throw that onto local interchain. And so if you already have like a, a whole Docker pipeline, like using Tilt, everything, um, would you be able to bring those configurations over? Well, all we need is just the Docker image itself. So we just build the doc, like a Docker build, and then take that image. You can throw that into like a tar file, and then just use that in local interchain. So you don't actually need all of your configs. You just need the final Docker uh, image itself, and then just use just that. the image. Okay, yep. that's so cool. And and second question with with Spawn, obviously the way you mentioned it, it seemed like a replacement for Ignite to like fully scaffold the chain. Yes. Um, but obviously Ignite has the same capabilities to like add modules once you've already got a chain. Um, is, is Spawn the same way? Like, because uh, I found Ignite to be kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. So yes. um, if you could do that on like a pre-existing chain, you want to add some like IBC capabilities that obviously I, Ignite, I think only comes with uh, like uh, IBC transfers. So being able to add like interchain accounts just straight out of the way on a pre-existing chain. Is that yep. something that Spawn can handle? Spawn already does that today. We also have support for the Wasm Lite client. So you just specify, I want to use the Wasm Lite client on start. It'll automatically build that up for you. We don't currently have where you can easily add modules after the fact, but we've already built it into new. It just needs to be pulled into its own command. So that will maybe take a couple of hours to do for all of the modules we currently support. We have heard the feedback of people that had issues with Ignite CLI and we wanted to solve those pain points. So we do that where there's no comments required. Spawn just like infers it and figures it out itself because a lot of the format's the same and we handle all of the difficulty behind the scenes for you, which really helps bring up the experience. We had a testimony from Burke who was able to quickly spin up a new chain, a full upgrade to SDK version 50 from 47 in a weekend with one developer. So it's it's drastically increased the throughput that we can have. We want to abstract away all of those difficulties and local interchain is a part of that, which helps with testing to ensure that everything went correct. Wow, one weekend, that's amazing. And so I'm guessing Spawn is on like 50.3? Spawn is on Something 50. Like yes. Yeah. It's all the latest and greatest of everything. And we're going to continue. Oh. It's easy to maintain as well. Unlike Ignite, where there's temple files, uh, we're just native Go. And so we just embed all of those together. And then we remove the different features, et cetera, on our side 
based off of what the user wants. There's a tweet in the, the chat that goes over a video that quickly shows in four minutes from, from just creating the chain, automatically connecting it with IDC and being able to create a new module. It's extremely, extremely quick. That's amazing. You guys are sick. Cool. Um, uh, you... Yeah. How, how does this compare to uh, other interchain testing frameworks like Starship, for instance? Yeah. So Starship is probably our, I would say is the closest competitor. The issue that I have personally with Starship is that it's, it's great from a, it works standpoint. Like it's a great product. The issue is more so the UX behind adding new features and allowing it to be easy and interacting in multiple languages. So if you want to interact with Starship, I believe you need to know JavaScript or TypeScript. That should not be a hard requirement. We have the same issue on interchain tests where you have to use Go to interact with it. We want to allow any language. Also to mention Starship is moving over to local interchain. So their entire backend is going to be using us in the future because they've, they've agreed like that's the way to have you know, true interchain support is to have multi-language support. And it's a lot easier to configure. It's a lot easier to set up. And so uh, they'll be moving to our backend actually as well. Cool. Um, thanks, uh, Risha. Just, just a question. So, so with local interchain, you can also just like have uh, automated tests that you would like to run and execute against the, that the local test. Yeah, so you can write your your test in any language you're you're familiar with. If you're going to use Go, you should probably just use the standard interchain test because you probably need deeper. But for application developers that they want to just write a test, write up your test normally, and then it'll just hit it as if you were writing interchain tests just in a different language. So we have that abstraction layer to allow for that. So yeah, you build up your test, you run your test in the background, and then as long as everything goes correctly and your asserts are, are proper, then you're good. Cool. So so then just a question. So so what would, what's the difference then uh, for a user? Uh, when should a user use interchain test when local interchain uh, yeah, so the way that I see it, interchain test, if you're a module developer or protocol and you're building very low level checks, you should probably still be using interchain test because you're writing in Go. If you're planning on writing in any other language or you're building an application out itself, whether that be in Rust or just some other feature on top of a testnet, I would typically say local interchain is the way to go, as well as most smart contracts fits with the local interchain uh, flow because again you're writing in rust you probably want to write your test in rust so it's really more up to the user of how much abstraction are you comfortable with if you need extremely fine level detail interchain tests all of the way if you don't need as much go with local interchain cool thanks mm -hmm. great uh, any more questions for reese Thanks a lot, uh, Rhys, for the presentation and the demo. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Cool. Um, do we have any other topics to discuss? All right. If not, then we can wrap up. Uh, thank you very much, Rhys, again. Uh, yeah, I will share the recording when, when it's available. Great. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, hope to see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.